here were a few common questions that came up. So what happens with my timing if my timing changes? And so when you look at that chart again, and you think about, okay, when does the cedar go in? The cedar's supposed to go in, the schedule says 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, is that important? It is important, but if it is 8 p.m. tomorrow, or a little bit ahead of that, it's okay. Like you have a window of time. Because when you think about this as a 12 to 14 day cedar schedule, we have time to adjust. That body has time to get the hormones in place. Ideally, I'd love for you to do it at 8 o'clock. But you gotta be to work at 8, you do it at 7. You know, like that's not gonna make or break the scenario. PG6, or PMS, no, estrogen, <clears throat> PGF2 alpha. We try to give it 48 hours before breed day. If you're much later than 48 hours, you're, you're better off to be a little ahead, right? So if we're gonna say, okay, 48 hours before your breed day, you're gonna give a shot at estimate. I'd rather you be, you know, 50 hours or, or the night before than I would be after. But if you look at this chart, you see that little spike in there. So when, in the, in the normal animal, when the spike goes up, you have to have at least 48 hours to kill any kind of luteal tissue that's in there to make the timing on the backside work. So we can be, we can be a little ahead of it, but we don't want to be after it. When it comes to insemination, Donnie, you said 18 to 12 to 18 hours on a cow. So a cow's in standing heat, we're gonna bring her 12 to 18 hours in. Is that a specific time? No, it's, it's a window of time, right? 12 to 18 hours. So one of the things, one of the confusions we get into sometimes is we say, okay, your breeding time is 1 p.m. And we're ahead of schedule so we can breed them at noon or we're running behind schedule so we're gonna breed them at two. And God love Bruce Aker. Who knows, who knows Bruce Aker? Is everybody here? I love Bruce to death, done business a long time. Every year a company goes, what'd you change this year? Of course, you know, he actually, he says it real low and kind of grow. Well, where'd you call it, where'd you change this year? Every time. And it's not that we're changing anything, but there is a window of time. But if we schedule your breed time for one, it's effectively just trying to make the cadence of the day work most efficiently and most effectively. But there is a window of time in there that it's still fine, it's still okay. And especially, so I, I spent uh, several weeks in Australia breeding over there. And they, they do these big, these big merino operations. And so they actually do one or two cedar pulls a day. You know, so if we're breeding uh, on the big days, like if we're breeding four or 450 ewes in a day, they'll split it in two different cedar pools so we're more accurate. We start with fresh semen and we go to frozen. So, like the, the window is bigger than what we than what we think, but when we're dealing, they're not they're dealing with forty dollar dose semen, thirty dollar dose semen. We're dealing with three hundred, four hundred dollar dose semen. So our goal is to try to maximize that window. You know, so if we're breeding at fifty two to fifty three hours, they might be breeding at forty eight hours, which is probably fine. They're going to suffer a little bit of conception rate in Australia but they don't really care because it's a volume game, right? So there is a window of time, but the most critical segments of your protocol and your schedule is cedar pull and breed times. Those are the ones that are more the most important and the most critical.